on the wrong path lord found me had to reroute curse and shackles bond in jesus name call it up and now up and now up and now hey y'all welcome back to perfect god pursuing me i'm yaz coming at you straight from my prayer closet i have not made a video in here in a minute but i'm so excited to talk about this topic if you're new here make sure to like comment subscribe i truly enjoy talking about taboo topics that i wish i had more discourse wisdom guidance um obviously all biblical when i was walking as a newer believer as a younger believer um, and coming out of the lukewarm so somebody actually that i met when i was still kind of like battling with my flesh in this area uh, meaning i was smoking with this person <laughs> but in that season of my life i met this person and they asked me this question and i was like wow it's like so simple right but i never really gave it intentional thought but i knew that this video needed to go out because if she's asking me then i know that she's probably not the only person wondering and needing you know kind of like that big sis talk people tell me you're my big sis in christ and i'm like okay i like that i'm like gen z gen z's big sis okay so let's go i have spoken with the holy spirit prayed about it um i've spoken with my bestie and i've spoken with my husband about this because we all have been touched by god in this area to leave weed behind and to walk now as children of light so this wisdom it's not just from me it's from other believers who you know have their own testimony and i wish that they would be able to be here in this room and share it as well but i'll give you what i can before i get started let's just go ahead and pray father in the name of jesus thank you god for the tech setup thank you for this house thank you for what you're pouring in for this video to even happen and to manifest and to go forth i pray lord that anyone under the sound of my voice right now god would receive your fresh wind your fire and your power and your holy spirit to leave the ways of this world behind no matter how bound they feel no matter how they might how high they might be right now god that your fire would sober them up in the name of jesus that they would throw away that weed that they would flush the weed that they would get rid of the blunt wraps the paper the all the the things the contraband that goes with it god and they would walk in faith and trust you god that they don't need weed they don't need any substance that we just need you jesus so i thank you lord that people are getting free right now and that you're chasing after your children god and i thank you lord that you're using me in any incremental small way to help in your mission lord god i thank you that you freed me you freed your children and you're still working god I thank you, Lord. I pray that you would use me, God, in this video, that I would say nothing that you don't want me to say, God, that it would be all of you and none of me, and it would reach who you need it to reach. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so don't mind me if I'm a little bit all over the place. I have some notes that I've jotted down from myself and from my conversations. Um, so if it's a little, if it lacks a little organization, usually I like to move in excellence and I'll have points on the screen for you and it's all in order, but this one, I kind of am just fired up and I just want to go ahead and share it because I feel God kind of lighting that fire under my booty to get this video out. So don't mind me if it's a little all over the place, but just to start, okay? First thing is to decide. If you're going to stop smoking, you need to have a real look in the mirror with yourself just like we do with all hard decisions and you need to say self what are we doing are we going into 2025 still smoking because that's one conversation or are we going to stop and you have to have that covenant that you make with yourself that inner covenant nobody else has to know about it you don't have to, to post about it i mean if that helps keep you accountable sure but i feel that sometimes that can add added pressure this coming from somebody who shares a lot <laughs> but you need however you go about it you need to decide that you're going to stop and I'll just leave it at that, but that's going to be your personal private time between you and the Lord where you say, look, I don't want to do this anymore. And you don't have to have it all figured out in that moment, but you need to make a decision and draw a line in the sand and figure out which side that you're on. The second thing to do is pray and repent. Once you make that decision, we're going to go a little bit deeper in this video into the repentance piece. Um, so if you're kind of confused on that or, you know, you're like, if this is leaving more to be desired, then just stick with me through the end of the video. But after you make that decision, pray, Lord, I'm going to need your help to do this. I don't even know if I can do this. Lord, I'm scared to do this. Whatever is authentic for you in that moment, please keep it real with the Lord. I'll say that's one thing that's helped me a lot, not only in my walk with the Lord, but in my walk with people, just not having so much fear of man and just keeping it real. Like, just be who you are. There's enough 
carbon copies and copy paste in this world. Just be you, especially in your prayer time with the Lord. Let him know what is actually hard about this for you. And if you don't know what it is, ask him to help you because he certainly will, whether it's in a dream, whether it's him speaking to you, giving confirmation through your pastor or a sermon, he'll let you know about yourself, trust me. <laughs> but you can't expect him to help you with something that you're not presenting at his feet. So authentically let him know like, Lord, this was my comfort after X, Y, and Z trauma happened. Lord, this is my habit because I'm anxious to go throughout my day without it. Whatever it is, present that before the Lord and he's going to work you out. Trust me. Okay. And then also repenting, right? So like it or not, your use of weed is an idol because you're essentially saying this drug in whatever form you take it, whether you eat it, whether you smoke it, whatever, is your comfort is what you lean on is what you need first thing in the morning or last thing at night you're saying this is what i cling to this is what i stand on this is what i need in order to be okay and the lord is patiently waiting for you to accept him actually as your god and let him be all of those things and more for you and this is like a hard pill to swallow if you're somebody who does love the lord to know that you're grieving him in that way but you're essentially saying i want to worship and bow to weed more than I want to bow to Jesus. So repent for that and repent for not trusting him with the fullness of you and leaning on a false God, which is weed over him. This is something um, my husband shared with me that he did when he first stopped smoking. Um, and it's interesting, our testimony, because I stopped smoking and then he stopped smoking. So we had this little gray area space and then I got to, it was beautiful though, because I got to watch him walk it out. Um, he says that something that helped him keep his promise to himself and the Lord was to replace the habit. So if there's something you're doing, even if it's not necessarily smoking weed, but if there's something you're doing and you know the Lord is calling you to get right with him and leave that behind, but there's a certain time of day that you always get tempted or that you've been in the habit for years of doing this thing, then at that time of day, you need to get ahead of it by praying and doing something else. <laughs> Maybe you, you know what I mean? If you can't get around it um, because you're you know you do you did it on the way driving to work and you still have to drive to work just do something else while you're driving to work like maybe instead of you know picking up a blunt you like find a new podcast that you listen to that like keeps you busy mentally instead or maybe if you always did it you know before you took a shower take a shower at a different time so you're confusing your body right so whatever you need to do just replace the habit with something else okay now this is just for me because somebody i was actually just speaking with a coworker about this but after you have, because I'm believing in the name of Jesus, that if you're watching this video and you're struggling with this, you are going to stop smoking weed and God is going to empower you to walk in a new way and to worship him alone. But once you stop smoking, even if you feel like you're not doing a good job because you got tempted 20 million times in two days, or maybe you transgressed and you backslid and you slipped up, but you're trying again, whatever it is, once you're not smoking for a little while, doesn't even have to be long, notice how you feel Cause this is what my coworker was telling me is like after he um stopped he noticed this mental clarity that he had and this like this clarity of thought and the work that he and i do is not with our hands it's with our brains <laughs> so it's kind of important to have clear thoughts you feel me <laughs> but just notice how you feel for me something that was i could still um i, I wasn't as sharp i'm gonna keep it real i wasn't as sharp but i could still like mentally function and do a lot of things I need to do, not everything. Like I couldn't sit here and make a YouTube video, but I could do a lot of other things, even if I was high. But what I couldn't do was the functions that I needed to operate my house in excellence. And I noticed like God blessed me with a house, with an apartment after a season of housing insecurity, which I've shared a bit about on this channel. And then I'm sitting here in the house, just smoked high and now I'm too tired to do the dishes before bed. Uh-uh. I, I, I just knew I was dead wrong. So it's like little things like that. Like, I would always feel like I don't have enough time. I don't have enough energy to do what I need to do. And then after I stopped smoking, I noticed I just had this abundance of time, this abundance of energy to organize and to clean and to steward well what God had blessed me with. So that was just a, a motivator for me. It's like now I don't have to be in my house and be overwhelmed when I look around at a mess because I have the time and the energy and I'm stewarding my resources well enough to be able to handle that or maybe for you it's your mind you're able to think more clearly and you don't feel as overwhelmed because of that but just notice how you feel because I guarantee it might not be all the time that you feel better but you're gonna feel a lot better after you stop smoking 
Okay, next thing is I'm not the Holy Spirit, so I can't tell you exactly what's going on inside of you, right? But if you pray, he will let you know. But it's very likely that if you're putting weed down and you're wanting to walk in a new path, you're going to need to get delivered. <laughs> so something my bestie brought to my attention while we were speaking about this is, you know, God gave us life by breathing life into us. He is the Ruach. He's the breath of life. So we were speaking, and her and I, and we were saying we are using our free will to breathe in this drug. We're using our free will and our time and our hands that nobody forced us to do to breathe in death. And that's opening doors and you're wondering now why you're struggling. You're wondering why you're depressed. You're wondering why your hormones are out of whack. It's because you're covenanting, you're coming into agreement, you're signing a, a legal contract in the spiritual realm with death every time you breathe in this drug that's altering your mind. And this is, I just want to, I say this a lot, but I just want to make it very clear. This is not from a place of judgment. Um... I smoked a lot of weed before <laughs> so I'm not just trying to make you feel dirty or unclean but like you probably need to go ahead and get delivered because every time you picked up that weed you opened doors my pastor would say is the gateway to the demonic um, and then I was watching Richard Lorenzo who's a pastor in Florida I think he went live about this and he was just saying like when you smoke weed you access the spiritual realm for show and that's why a lot of new agers and witches like it but you're doing it illegally and when you're not doing it in a holy way through Jesus you're not getting what you think you're getting because the enemy likes to steal kill and destroy he likes to deceive he likes to manipulate so you think you know you're just hearing from God and you can still read your Bible while you're high but you're not only gonna hear from God you can hear from other spirits too and they can linger and they can plant seeds um, yeah the demonic realm doesn't play fair so a lot of the warfare that folks are experiencing while you're high or after you know having a battle struggling with smoking weed um it's because now demons have entered and you need to get delivered i know that was definitely my testimony my husband's my besties that's just three people we're not the whole world so i can't say what's going on with you but i know like our church october um 31st it was halloween last year they had a mass deliverance service with um apostle alexander pagani and we were instructed to bring our accursed items to the altar at church where we would pray over it after we received deliverance and then our pastors went ahead and burned everything so that was um, a huge blessing for god to open the door for me to experience something like that i brought <laughs> I'm laughing because I remember my uh one of my sisters in Christ was like dang girl you got your groceries I got like these two giant totes of stuff I needed to get rid of and that just goes to show like God has brought me out of so much darkness because I've gotten rid of a lot of new age stuff before even coming to this church but I still have things that needed to go ways that I idolized people and like things that signified that lingerie when I wasn't married and had no business wearing it um and then weed contraband just things that symbolize darkness but weren't necessarily my active participation in new age if that makes sense those are things i brought to the altar my husband left um one of his phones and all of his weed stuff um and it was symbolic our pastors burned it for us and it was very symbolic and cathartic so i would consider doing that for yourself too if you don't know where you can take it pray about it if you can't burn it um Pray and throw it away, because I've done that too. Pray and throw it in the dumpster and walk in your deliverance and your freedom. So yeah, another thing is if you know, you're know you not very familiar with the spiritual realm, with the demonic, this would be a good time to learn more about the spiritual realm. The Bible says that we battle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual forces and darkness and heavenly realms. So... I know that there was a time and place where like I didn't know that much about spiritual warfare and the demonic realm where there was a time and place where my husband I remember like we first started coming to our church come to my church and he didn't even believe in demons so the Lord has really worked and taught us a lot and I know he can do the same for you but 
like it or not, believe it or not, smoking weed is accessing the demonic realm and it's opening your spirit up for spiritual warfare and darkness. So asking the Lord to teach you more about it um, and lead you to resources and approved teachers and leaders um, who can point you in the right direction biblically um, to equip yourself because we are at war and if you have been smoking weed you're already in the war soldier so it's time to armor up okay yeah this is another really good point my bestie brought to me if you feel convicted to stop smoking weed run with the momentum and what she meant by that was a lot of people will have this fire when they're starting out like i'm done smoking weed i'm going to stop today but the world the enemy negative influences peer pressure can come in and say that's not possible to quit cold turkey you've been smoking so long that's not realistic why would you set yourself up for, for failure you should taper off and we're I'm, I'm coming here representing her thought to run the other way when you hear that if you feel convicted to stop smoking weed stop be right away today yesterday right now because if you do taper off that one time where you're going from five months a day to one or two that that first or second can be the blunt that is you know accessing a certain demon that now you're gonna have to battle with even harder because it was that time and that thing you exposed yourself to and that action you took after you were high that just contracted and locked that demon in even more and then for me i'm kind of more like thinking on the practical realm it could be that first or second blunt that's laced with god knows what like we know we're up against some serious stuff i don't want to get flagged on youtube but like you don't know what's in these drugs nowadays so it could be that one blunt that i hate to say it but it could be your last so if you feel convicted to stop stop get rid of it get an accountability partner that can look over like i'm just gonna keep it so super duper real with you if you used to pay your drug dealer on venmo get an accountability partner that can look at your public venmo payments and monitor you and say what don't what what was that purchase get rid of everything that you had um to smoke with and whatever finances you were using lock that away somewhere right like put it in a savings account that's not that easy to transfer out of so that maybe you have to have forcibly a 24-hour grace period to think before you transfer it out and use it for weed like we got to get real about this stuff so that's something that i would suggest another thing is if you are here you probably had some type of conviction to stop smoking or at least a curiosity but I would say and something me and my bestie talked about pray for the conviction to stop smoking because sometimes we're kind of on the fence and we're lukewarm about it and something my pastor says is that it's better to be one foot in and one foot out than no feet in so that's good that you're here and that you're thinking about it but pray for that conviction to fall heavily over your life I be praying this for other people too that if you tell if you my friend are you my sister in Christ and you come tell me that you want to smoke but you getting tempted or you backslid guess what i'm telling the holy spirit lord make it make the smell of it disgust her make the smell of it nauseate her i pray the conviction would be uh, undeniable lord god that whatever somebody near her would smoke she would have to run the other way because she feels nauseous like pray pray that bold prayer for conviction because he'll do it and i I'm doing this and I'm saying this because it happened for me. Like I used to be that person. Let me just share my testimony about weed really quick. I started smoking when I was 13. I'm from California. I'm not gonna say too much, but I had access easily. It was never an issue for me to get it. I obviously didn't have no money, but I had mad weed. Like it was just not even an issue. Um, so because of that and because of that ease of access, I started smoking really young. When I first started smoking though, it was with um, a friend from school who was actually a soldier in the kingdom of darkness and that's a whole other testimony but i had opened a lot of doors as a child and i had to get delivered over several years to kind of like reconcile myself with christ about that um but because it was so easily accessible i would stop many times and then pick it back up just kind of like haphazardly or lightheartedly not knowing that was the devil pulling me back in but it wasn't until I started praying and bringing it to God and stopping for him that I was able to stop for good. Because if you're stopping for yourself or you're stopping so that you can get hired at this job or you're stopping because you have a drug test for probation, whatever it is, right? Um, 
it, it's going to come back and you're going to start smoking again and you're going to continue to backslide. But if you're stopping for God, he has the final say. Vengeance is his and he has the last laugh. So pray for that conviction um, and God will be the one to stop this habit for good in Jesus name. Um, okay, so another thing is pray over and clean your house, your temple, your physical space, your car, wherever you would smoke, pray over that place and just let those demons know that enter through that marijuana and all the contraband associated with it and all those open doors of what you would do after you would smoke. Hello, somebody. Let them know that they're trespassing now. The door is closed. They're inoperable they're not allowed here anymore this house belongs to jesus christ and they are no longer welcome that this house is covered in the blood of jesus if you have some anointing oil this is we're going into spiritual warfare now but get you some oil set it apart don't use it for nothing else that means it's consecrated pray over it put a little bit on your hands and pray 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 touch anoint 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 just to put it in a really quick way for you that will help um too because those demons that are attached to the weed that are whispering in your ear to smoke again to just light up to just smoke half the blunt they're gonna be blocked by the blood of jesus and i promise you i've seen this work the plate after i stopped smoking lord i'm 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 really telling all the business in this video the well, after i stopped smoking but my husband who was not my husband at the time we're still living in sin but god is gracious enough to hear our prayers and hear our cries and answer us even when we're not right with him my husband was still smoking. The place where he would smoke at in the house because he knew to keep that away from me. And we're going to get to that point next because I wasn't smoking anymore. I anointed that room. I covered it in oil and prayer. And he literally like that night, I'm not saying he stopped right away, but he didn't go in there and smoke that night. Did he smoke somewhere else? Yes. But that demon couldn't enter my house anymore because I prayed and anointed it. So prayer works pray over your house your temple and cover it in the blood of jesus and watch those demons flee okay so now that you've done all this it's time to really lock in because you've set the foundation you've pissed off the devil he's mad because he can't enter your house you don't have any of the tools that he used to enter your spirit with and he's going to try to work overtime to get you back but you need to lock in right with all of these tools that I've given you and just keep reminding yourself and reminding the courtroom of heaven through your prayer your petition your worship and your lifestyle that you belong to Jesus now and you're not doing the things you used to do you're not doing the things that your family does you're not doing the things your friends are used to seeing you doing you're not doing the thing that used to make you a conversation topic you're a new creation in Christ Jesus so just lock in and if you're a, if you have people around you whether it be family or friends or just acquaintances you used to hang out with that are always smoking you need to separate yourself from them and that can be hard especially if you're a people pleaser you're going to be seen as the bad guy you're going to be seen as acting different acting funny uppity bougie stuck up all that that's okay <laughs> because at the end of the day the road is narrow and you're choosing more than just to stop smoking you're choosing life and death you're choosing torment over life abundantly you're choosing heaven and hell and those people that you're separating yourself from they're gonna see your salvation and your testimony through your walk and it's going to impact them you would be surprised even if they make fun of you or they don't tell you you're impacting people by your choices so you know if it's your family members let them know like i did like I, with my husband um when he was still my we weren't even engaged when he was my boyfriend living in sin <laughs> hey don't smoke that around me like take that somewhere else um and if it's someone you can choose to separate from you might be a little lonely but you always have jesus and he is like closer than a brother he is the best friend but you're gonna have to separate yourself from those people and pray for maybe new friends which i do have a video on this channel about but that's what i have to say about how i stopped smoking weed i know that was a mouthful and i feel like i probably could have gone on and yapped for another 20 minutes but i hope this encouraged you empowered you when the holy spirit comes upon you you will receive power so i just thank god right now that his children are receiving power to leave weed behind right now and into the new year and forever because we are new creations in christ I thank you, God, Lord Jesus, that you are pursuing us in this hour. We love you. We honor you. Help us to walk in your way, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you on the next video. Smash a woman on the ground. Bake the hood. Cast the reel out. Serpent come around me. Ronda Rousey. It's a knockout.